Hi, I'm Dave, welcome to the channel and welcome to another one of these little Tech Bits videos. This week, I'm going to be tuning up the revived Ninko Mosler. Now, you may remember a few videos ago, I found an old Ninko Mosler in my collection of old slot cars and brought it back to life, fixed the cracked pinion and tuned it up a bit. And I got a reasonable time out of it on the track, 5.879 seconds ninth in the grand scheme of things and I said then it would be time to add a bit more tuning to it and see if we could squeeze a bit more speed out of it so here's the before if you like now I've got some lead to add so I can add a bit of weight to it to tune it up I'm also going to add some NSR ultra grip tires now the guys at Talking Utter Slot will be instantly divided over this because, no, not those guys, close, those guys. Because Scott on the left thinks taking a magnet out is tuning and Peter on the right, Pedro, loves to tune a car. So, yeah, we're already divided here, but never mind. So I'll be using the Swift 16 tyre truer to true those up. Got a bit of blue tack to stick some things down with. I might try and stick down this loose motor with that and try and damp out some of the movement. Got some files there, so I can file down just the edges of this chassis so it gives it a bit of movement so I can get some body float in. And you're wondering probably why this Revo slot box is here. Well, in the Revo slot box there is a Revo slot deep wood guide. Now the great thing about this guide is the diameter of the pin in it is exactly the same as the Ninko one so it fits beautifully in that department now first thing to do of course is get the old Ninko guide out and if we compare it with the new guide you'll see the new guide is a lot deeper and quite a lot longer as well. So that will help on the track. And as I say, it's a perfect fit in the post. However, there's a little bit of a clearance issue at the front. So I'm going to have to open up that hole a little bit just to make room so that the guide can sit down properly. That's okay, because that's what files are for. So it's a bit crude at the moment. I will tidy it up, but I've opened it up enough that you can see the guide will now spin freely in the space I've provided for it. You can see it's nicely forward of the front wheels as well, which is always good. And I'm going to use some Slotting Plus standard 035 braid. I found that works best on my Carrera track for pretty much every car. So there we are. That's in place. Nice new tidy braids. I've still got to shim out the guide. So what I'm going to do is put it on the setup block. I'm just going to push the centre of the guide down and have a bit of a look and see what the gap is between the guide and the bottom of the post. And I'll get a couple of slotting plus shims. You pop those over the post, can be a bit fiddly. Just push them down with a pair of pliers. I'll put two on for now and we'll have a try and see how that is. Now as it sits, I think when I try and turn the front wheels, 
there's still too much resistance. The wheel should only just be touching the surface. So I'll put a couple more shims in, see if we can get that nice. So that's sitting down nicely at the front. And I'm fairly happy with that. So I shall put the screw in the top now to hold the guide in place. Again, this is a slotting plus screw. All the slotting plus stuff just seems to fit. And now I think the front wheels have got just enough resistance. They're just touching the surface. And you can see the guide has got a nice bit of spring provided by the wires now as well. That's just about perfect, I think. And the front wheels are just touching. So now we'll look at these retires. Get the axle off. Pull off the old hard, very ancient Ninko rubber tires. Now there may not be anything wrong with those, but we're trying some things because that's what tuning is all about. So NSR Ultra Grips, these are a little bit chubby, but they do fit. but they've kind of got high inner and outer edges on them just because of the way they sit on those wheels and I can't get rid of all of it but I can get rid of it with the truer so out with the Swift 16 tyre truer bit of soapy water for lube So they didn't need much. Now I want to deal with this slightly wobbly motor before I put the rear axle back in. So here's a bit of blue tack, get it nice and warm, squish it in down both sides. And the great thing about the blue tack is you can get it really warm and squishy and then once you've stopped using it in your hands and it cools back down it, it hardens right back up again so that should hold the motor quite nicely pop the axle back on so that's tyres, motor and guide so far I'm just going to file off the very edges of this piece of chassis just to make a little bit of room. It's the only part of the chassis that directly fouls on the edges of the body which would restrict movement. So now I've made a bit of space either side. So I can put the body back on and I can loosen off the chassis screws and there is room for the body to move on top of the chassis then. And the last little thing I'm going to do here is add a bit of weight. Obviously we took the magnet off, which while that has a magnetic effect, also there's a weight aspect. So there's a little bit of lead. Oh, it's not lead, it's pretend lead. I'm going to test myself and try and get 10 grams off there and cut it into two 5 gram pieces. Just by eye. I have no idea if this will work. We'll have a go. Let's see. Yes, 5 grams. Good guess. Yeah, five grams as well, also a good guess. So again, a little bit more blue tack, only a tiny amount, and I'm gonna sort of smear it along the bottom of the two pieces of lead so that I can just stick them onto the chassis. This will allow me to tune it up by moving them forwards and backwards and maybe moving them into the center of the car or behind the axle. I can move them around, run the car, see what works out best. So now that's guide, front axle height sorted, weights, 
motor's in place and the rear tyres are done and the back of the chassis is clearanced. Little bit of oil, that's about all the things I think we can tune. And we'll stick this on the track and see what happens. As you can see, it was a good car. It's certainly even more friendly on the track now. It, it's not trying to bite back at me. It's very smooth. And with that big deep guide, as you saw there, if you really do overcook it, it's not going to de-slot. De The one thing that's happened here really is consistency. This car is a bit quicker than it was, let's face it. It's not going to be a second quicker because that would be nearly impossible on this track. But what I can do now is get very consistent quick times, lap after lap, without having to feel like I need to fight the car in any way. It's just doing it for me. And so we went from 9th place and 5.879 seconds and this improved dramatically. This car is now the 4th fastest car on my track at 5.6 seconds dead. It's up there with the big Revo slots and the little Alpha which is an incredible car on this track. Just after it is another Revo slot and an NSR, some more Revo slots. In ninth now is the SRC Capri. So it's ahead of all of these very good cars. And then we're into sideways cars, the slotted Mercedes. A couple more slotteds and another sideways. And then just to finish out the top 20 while we're here, once we get down to 16 onwards, that's the Carrera cars and the Pioneer Legends. So overall, I'm really impressed with this. As you can see, those NSR rear tyres on this are a little bit chubby, but... We have taken what was a dead car and turned it into what is a very good car now. Just with a few bits of tweaking and tuning. So, as always, thanks for watching one of my videos. If you liked it, you'll find a button specifically for that. Please subscribe to the channel, it really does help. And if you hit the bell, you'll get a notification the next time I post a video. And check out this slot car and railway and music and just generally very interesting channel.